Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Hey folks, Steve Stack, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, back at Studio 3B, and I have uh, I have the opportunity today to be sharing the, the interview desk with Mr. Chris Filardi. Hello, Chris. everybody. Good. Welcome back. I'm glad to be here. <clears throat> Why'd we drag you over here today? I try to remember someone's name, I think. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, <clears throat> we missed out on our final project for season two to sit down and have time to talk. Uh, those last couple of days were hectic up there. They, were. they always are. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we off camera we were talking, we finished filming and it seems like it was years ago rather than just months ago. What what happened? <laughs> you know, I I don't know if there's a good analogy that fits for everybody, but to me, you know, you, you could say it's like going to a camp. You can say it's like doing mission work. You can say it's doing a lot of stuff. That you're totally engaged for 17, 18 hours a day in that project. And with everybody, personalities, food, everything, like blowing out your head, all the different things that go on in a week. And when you're done, I think your brain has to just rest a little bit. And then when you come back, you realize, oh my God, it's a week, it was a week ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it's amazing to me. You know, you and Hal Schaefer, uh, come on media, renovation hunters, and, and our buddy, uh, Mr. Turkovich from Turkovich Construction, uh, the on-site superintendent, sergeant, the man in charge, right? Um, wow, we had another whale of a year. Mm -hmm. You know, going back to our first project for season two, uh, one of the most beautiful pieces of property Gorgeous. I've ever had the privilege of walking and uh, Hawassi, Virginia, down there, Nice cabin. The Blue Spring. The Blue, Blue Spring Farm. And it was uh, it, it was just amazing. I met Kevin down there a couple of days before the cast and crew to help him unload some product that was being delivered and and uh, surrounded by mountains and bordered by a beautiful stream. And then the Blue Spring itself. Uh, and now seven acres of freshly planted food crop <laughs> right right and so how how did you guys number one how'd you come up with that project was it a submission yeah uh, all, all of them uh, all of them are submission the consumers are doing a great job uh, making videos and telling us their story uh, it, you know there's no easy way to to pick it uh, you, you you fall in love with people you fall in love with their story you fall in love with this the area or you fall in love with what you can do in the house that there's so many different avenues when we pick it but what we generally do is you know first and foremost it is a renovation show so you got to be able to renovate it right you got to be able to do substantial stuff in eight days that are going to blow the customer away or the consumer away and so kevin's part is really really critical in the beginning which is can you actually do that like if you pull up the floor is it rotted is there bugs is it like he's the one who goes in and and has all the ideas uh the big ideas but then he tempers it with okay can i really do this so that's a filter that we look at it clearly the story and this year you'll see we have fantastic stories that go above and beyond our original mission just to get people outdoors we we deal with uh als and, and some charities uh we, we deal with uh you know, cancer with some people. Uh, so we have a lot of stories that are, that are going good. And then the other one is just logistics. You know, it's how do you get 30 people plus 10? Cause we usually have other people coming and visiting and doing stuff in one place efficiently that are going to work all day that don't really want to drive an hour at the end of the day. Cause they've already been working for, you know, 15 hours. So the logistics part of it is it. So you put all those together. Uh, I wish I could tell you there's a formula. There's not, you put them all together and you pick the best one and, 
generally when we go talk to them, you can tell, you can tell we made the right decision because these people are just so heartfelt when they're asking for help and what they want. And uh, it's been, a, it's just a real privilege. Season one to season two, it didn't seem like there was a lot of time, but right. it's the same thing we're facing now. And, and it seems like it was eons ago, but what, what did you take away from season one? What did you learn in season one that carried over to season two or got improved upon? There's a lot of moving parts to these machines. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a really good question. I, you know, I always break things down into bullets because it helps me kind of get a thought out. But the, the, the first one that, that's really the biggest learning is just people, just how our, how our group coalesces under stress, when they're tired, when they traveled, working 17 hours a day in the rain, <laughs> you know, like the, the relationship that the crew has and what they've been able to accomplish is, is, is pretty amazing. So I keep learning, unlike corporations where you try to do all this stuff to get people to like each other. At the end of the day, you let them go and they're doing great work. Someone can have an off day. And what, what's the difference between the beginning and now is that people have true l love and respect for their fellow castmate. So if someone's having a down day, you know, it's not like, oh, they're not doing their job. If someone's having a down day, people, are, I watch them actively pep them up and get them there and stuff. So I think what we learned is that the coalescence of the, of, of the team is really the key ingredient. You know, you, and we'll talk about the stories and stuff, but that, that's, a, that's a key ingredient. Very much so. And, and uh, just from my perspective, uh, the more we've advanced in, into... Uh, through season one into season two and filming the season two being complete um, and spending more and more time on site and and seeing responsibility being divvied out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is your project. This is your job. Let's get it done. Don't come back and ask me how to do it again. Get it done. <laughs> right. From, from the general, right? Yeah. And, and uh, but... As a whole, I think that's the biggest thing is the the cast and crew, uh, from the videographers to uh, yourself and Hal and Kevin, and then all the the makers and influencers. Uh, they we, they learn each other's strengths and we and it's such a collective group. I mean, everybody's so different. They all have different skills. I think Kevin did a great job this year in getting different groups of people to work together, getting people where, you know, they're close on really understanding flooring, going with someone who knows flooring. And what I've learned again is that because he's been able to do that, the the dynamic is always a little different. People are learning. And it, it, when it's time to step up for that one person to go, hey, we're, we're down a minute, you gotta do that floor, can you do it? They can now. So it's really quite interesting to see the learning that's going on site as well too. So so we we, Regroup for the start of season two, project one, Hawassi, Virginia, and uh, the property didn't need anything. Yeah. Uh, it's it stood on its own. The cabin uh, held, had some challenges, had some foundation issues. Wanted to lean towards the creek a little bit and water, and uh, had a had a front porch that faced the the creek initially. Uh, was enclosed and turned into two bedrooms and a side entryway. Uh, and it had uh, somewhere between a one and a half to two and a half inch fall from the house towards the creek. And and uh, we put some hardwood flooring in there. And I remember the, they, they put the dowel on the floor before the flooring and it just went rolled right off. <laughs> I think it had to be four or five inches. It, it might have been a tube of caulking or something. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we rolled it. And, and so it had... It had challenges, but it had all the right stuff. Uh, the main cabin, authentic log cabin with the chinking and and uh, kitchen needed updated. The uh, great family room, living room, uh, and then like I say, the two bedrooms. Uh, but it, very similar to, it makes me think of Christ, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, very similar. Yeah, you know, from a structure standpoint, uh, s structure and charm, it was there, and we had to be very careful not to disrupt that charm, leave that charm in there, and 
<clears throat> and by gosh, the team did it again. I mean, uh, we introduced some hardwood flooring. Uh, you guys had the whole place inside, outside, sandblasted. Yeah, that made a big difference. Brought that beautiful field stone chimney back to life, got all that nasty paint off of it. And the outside, yeah, I mean, it was like yeah. blood red, and now it's big shiny, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and really, really did a lot. I mean, uh, did some new cabinetry, uh, installed some new cabinets down there, some new, new countertops. Uh, we supplied some, some nice uh, hardwood tops for the kitchen area. And, and all in all, uh, the project went pretty well. Uh, you know, one of you guys' signatures is, is uh, becoming the, uh, the cleaning station, whether it be a fishing cleaning station or uh, deer, bear, whatever. Yeah, skinning shack, yeah. fishing shack, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Those yeah. have gradually, I mean, we made our best this year and, and it'll come out. It, it, the best one we ever had, it, it, it goes, it's like a, a big porch. It's got, you know, stuff to cook and prepare on. It's got a grill on and it's got a hang, you can hang meat and butcher. It, it, it is outstanding. I mean, it, it's one of the best we've done so far. Like, most of the other projects, uh, all all with the exception of one, and it had its own story, but uh, this property had a story too. And the story behind the project with Casey and Christine, and now what that property is being used for. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I said it when it was introduced to me when we were down there. Uh, the old adage, you always heal better at home. Uh, Christine, cancer survivor, and she's extended their property for folks to come visit, whether it's a week, two weeks, a weekend, whatever, and say, here, relax. To recoup. Yeah. Relax. And that's very yeah. easily done. What's, what's cool about Christine and her mindset was it wasn't about, you know, a typical it, what you hear of where someone has cancer and then and, and they go to a place that they can relax. I mean, this is something that she's learned from her experience of going through the disease and the treatment. And when she needed to rest her body and rest her mind and develop, you know, the next phase in her life. And, and so that's what I think is really cool. She's bringing not only cancer patients in for that great opportunity, but it's at the right time when they really need it. And she knows because she's been through it. Very much so. And, and, uh, you know, I got a congratulations again to uh, uh, Renovation Hunters and the Outdoor Channel. Um, we're, we're able to share a fantastic story. It's a, definitely a, a check in the wind column for anybody that was involved with the project. And, and um, I, I just remember Reveal Day. I think that reveal... Uh, it it probably was right up there with uh, the Tyanista reveal. As far as number of people, uh, yeah. there was a slew. We yeah, came through in shifts. Might have actually been more, to be honest. <laughs> there was a lot of people that didn't even come down till afterwards. But yeah, it's always nice when, uh, you know, you're in a, we're all always, always in these small towns and, you know, the, the com camaraderie, I guess I was going to say community and camaraderie, the same words, they all came out. They came out just to see how happy yeah. they were just walking in. It was really fascinating to me. And I, I think that kind of the strength of what we all put together is really kind of the secret. The sec if there is a secret formula in a TV show, that's it. We're taking that community together. We're, we're getting them to res respect and understand what's really cool about their property and their local environment, and, and they come out in droves to watch it. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So like I say, congratulations. I'm not going to win column. Folks, stick around. We're going to have more conversation talking about season two, uh, project two. Yeah. And, uh, and then we've got that third one we've got to talk about, and they just kept snowballing and getting better. So Look stick around, it. folks. We'll be coming back at you. For all you folks listening, Thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor Series, give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at BairdBrothers.com. Until next time.